If you clicked on this video, you probably have a few questions you're asking yourself, or me in this case. One, what in the world is Brahala? Or two, he's probably hard stuck gold, he doesn't know a thing about what he's saying. To those people, does that really even matter? I've been playing the game for well over five years now and have been keeping up with the pro scene for the last two. I may not be a super experienced player, but some of the things I'll be pointing out don't rely on my in-game rank. The problems I'll be addressing with the game have nothing to do with its community, the space around it, or anything that isn't the game itself. Those deserve a video on their own. For this, I want to tackle the fundamental problems that come from playing the game like the everyday player. It doesn't matter whether you're Sandstorm or basic fun gameplay. Much respect to you, brother. Keep up the FFA content. The issues I talk about here are probably something you wanted to be addressed for a long time. Since simply addressing problems isn't a good form of input to any situation, I'll try my best to also include how the developers at Blue Mammoth Games, I'll be calling them BNG from now on, can improve on the problems and what they could do for the future of the game to further its reach to a general audience. Those issues are first impressions, gameplay, and general changes. Keep in mind that this is the first video essay I've ever done. I haven't written an essay in over half a year, and not everything I say in this video is a fact. To make things simple for you, I'll have chapters down below for those that want to skip and look at the individual problems that I call out. But I recommend watching the whole thing to please the funny algorithm and get this in the eyes of the game's audience. I've been on the intro for way too long, let's get into the content. I'm sure we can all look back at the time we first picked up the game. Either we were browsing the free section of the marketplace of whatever system we were using, or a friend told us to pick it up simply to kick our butt at something that wasn't a shooter. You loaded in and were greeted with the most flash game looking piece of code you've ever seen. I'm not kidding. Back then, I played a game called Super Smash Flash and it looked way better than this. Okay, I, uh, I take that back. Well, partially. You're greeted by the announcer and are left on your own from then on. As all your friends and parents tell you before you ask out a girl, first impressions are important. In many cases, people will have a single look at what you have to offer and turn away if it doesn't fit their fancy. Just to impress, as they say. BMG, you don't want to lose your audience before you have the chance to reel them in. Having some of the most bare-bones splash art with several options on the left and a section on the right that no one pays attention to will turn a lot of people away. I know a lot of Brawlhalla players will see that the mention of it, but this is something I think Multiverses did right, and I'll be referring to them throughout this video. Brawlhalla recommends you play free-for-all when you first open the game and don't even hint at the existence of a tutorial mode. And that isn't just for new players. Every time you open Brawlhalla, they recommend you play free-for-all. You could be a diamond player, heck, even Valhallen, which is the highest rank in the game, and they'll still recommend you play free-for-all. That's crazy! No matter how you look at it, this opening UI is just not right. So how could BMG go about it without losing the general vibe of the game? Well, for starters, new players should be forced into a tutorial and not that terrible one that's currently in the game. What they're currently implementing with the challenge preview is a great start. The first set of challenges do a better job introducing the player to the basic mechanics than the tutorial does, but it isn't really pushed. To get to it, you have to click offline play and look beneath the tutorial graphic. Two ways to do this better, and I'm going to refer to multiverses here, is by one, push the tutorial onto new players and implement a few of the challenges into them. I kid you not, the main tutorial doesn't even teach you how to dodge. And two, make the challenge preview more of an advanced tutorial as it is right now, and have it be known. Honestly, other than the graphic and how hidden it is, I have no qualms with it. It's probably the best change PMG has added that I can remember. I've learned all sorts of combos thanks to it, and highly recommend existing and new players to check it out. Now for the other point I mentioned, the UI needs a lot of improvement. The A tabs on the left side of the screen do not need to be there. Well, not all of them. There's an online tab, but it also has three other online modes that aren't put in that tab. Normally, no one would mind this. It's simple to understand, but put yourself in the mind of someone that has never picked up the game before. You load up the game to play with your friends, a custom FFA lobby so you can kick their butts and laugh at them while spamming six. You open the game and don't want to waste your time. You click online play and there is no option to play, on, to play custom. But wait, there's FFA, so maybe it's the same? You click it and choose your legend, invite your friends, but only one can join. Weird. You go back and decide to finally read, then there's the custom tab you're looking for. 
great now you know and never have to deal with it again or in another scenario let's say you want to play on ranked 1v1s to kill some time you click online play but there's only two options and none of them are a regular 1v1 experience is ranked the only one no because experimental 1v1 is that 1v1 experience you want only it's not like the base game so you can't viably use it to practice 80 percent of the time here's my solution to the ui problem get rid of some of the tabs change online play to casual play or something similar and move all of the casual options into it you already have the name and the banner when you click on it so why not change its name entirely brawl of the week and custom rooms do not need their own tab on the main screen also what's with those two on the experimental art they don't appear anywhere else in the game so change it with a character that does i personally think using one of the newer characters <coughs> arcade <coughs> would be dope Rank can stay as it is, battle pass is fine, offline play can stay, but please, for the love of god, get rid of tournament mode. Either that, or change its function entirely. It is useless. Meet the legends can stay, uh, but move the return button to the left side of the screen, please and thanks, and the store can stay. Replace strikeout with friendly 1v1 because frankly, it isn't that great of a game mode. Anything else I can say about the UI will warrant an entire change in the game's aesthetic, so I'll hold on to those for now. Let's move on to the next point. The game fundamentally has a problem, and a lot of it has to do with the gameplay. Unlike other platform fighters, Brahala has every character share a set of weapons. Every legend has two weapons they can use, and the signature kit, or heavy attacks, vary from legend to legend. As well as that, each legend has a different set of stats they can use to their advantage during gameplay. Two characters can share the same weapons, like katars, but feel very different in each legend's hands. For example, Queen Nai and Lin Fei both have katars, but have very different playstyles. Nai is a slow but heavy hitting katar legend. Her 7 points in attack and 8 points in defense will help her take out enemies and live to see tomorrow. Her signature kit is one of the strongest in the game for on-stage combat, and for new players, she may be a problem to fight against. However, you take her off stage, and you may as well have turned the tide of the battle. Her 3 points in speed make coming back on stage a chore, and her 4 dexterity makes attacking with Katars' quick attacks feel like you're watching paint dry. Now Lin Fei, on the other hand, is quite literally the opposite. She has 7 points in speed and 8 in dexterity, but 3 in attack and 4 in defense. She's a speedy legend that plays off stage really well, but hits you like your baby cousin when he doesn't get a turn on the Xbox. She relies on quick, repetitive strikes to lower the health of her opponents to eliminate them. Both legends are a pain to fight against, mostly because of Katarz's place in the current meta, but a well-trained player will know how to fight against them. This is a good thing. Even without voice lines and the fact that they share the same weapon, there is a different playstyle to how you should approach both legends individually. And this mostly applies to the rest of the characters. Because of this, Brawlhalla is a really balanced game. Most of the time, there isn't a single weapon that dominates the game. Brawlhalla's World Tournament last year had every weapon with the exception of two being used on the top 8 finals. However, that was a few months ago and times have changed with several balance patches rolling out and two new legends joining the fray with a new weapon. The current state of the game heavily favors Katars, but I doubt that'll last for very long. So if balancing isn't the issue with the game, then what is? Two things that have taken a lot of people out of the game and never turned back to. The answer is the casual gameplay style and hitboxes. The only solution to removing the over-reliance on signatures in low ranks is by increasing recover time on miss for the special heavy attack. Some legends are able to do a heavy attack and move into another one with no risk. It's no question that the low rank experience for a lot of players consists of heavy attacks after heavy attack. I'm willing to bet that a majority of the Brawlhalla ranked leaderboard is hardstock gold simply because of the signature spammers that can't beat any decent players. Trust me, I've been there. There are times, even in friendly twos, which is my preferred game mode, when I have to fight against six spammers. As easy as they are to beat for high ranked players, that isn't the case at a lower elo, and the only real way to solve that is by punishing everyone with high recovery frames on miss. No one likes being stun locked. I'm no game dev, so anything I say here isn't really something I'm well versed in, but six spamming is what gets a lot of people off the game. Now, the real issue I wanted to talk about and what inspired this entire video in the first place, Brahala and its hit hurt boxes. Let's take a look at Multiverses, shall we? Multiverses is a game that uses an homage of different sized characters, from small like Jake the Dog to massive like the Iron Giant. Because of this, no two characters share the same hurt boxes. This means that if I hit your toes, I hit your toes. I won't have to reach for some invisible force that surrounds your character, and neither will you. What you see is what you get, and a lot of times, that isn't the case with Brawlhalla. In Brawlhalla, your hitbox is a singular oval that doesn't change shape no matter what you do. For example, your character could be hugging a wall off stage, but I let out a scythe down light, and I grab you from the wall, even though your head was nowhere close to the scythe's blade. A static hurt box that is dealt 
the same amount of damage and force regardless of where it is hit is problematic for a competitive game of this nature. And do I even need to mention the signature hitboxes? Sometimes they're just so absurd that I can't cover every single one of them in this video. So how can Brawlhalla's hitboxes and hurtboxes be fixed? The answer isn't a simple one. I recognize this degree of an ask is far beyond the reach of what's possible for the small game, but I believe it's what it needs for the future of its competitive scene. I'll refer you to an image by Twitter user Alperen5841. This image showcases the new hurtboxes I'm proposing, a level system to how much damage is taken depending on where you're hit. Since a lot of the legends have the same build, I'm sure these new hurtboxes can be applied to all of them once one is figured it out. This will clear up a lot of the weird hitbox issues the game has and will make the playing experience that much cleaner. Changing the hitboxes of every attack to fit this system is where I feel a lot of issues will come from. There are so many attacks that don't hit when they should and do hit when they shouldn't. This will cause a lot of problems with the current build of the game, but I believe BMG has what it takes to balance it out. And on to my last point, the general changes that BMG has yet to put into the game that people have been asking for for years. It's safe to say that BMG has been a lot more public and thriving with its patches and upcoming features. It seems that ever since that stream last summer, everything's been turning around. We finally got a community manager. Regardless of how much he's allowed to say, it's a big step forward for the company. The development updates every three to five months are amazing and I'm hoping they continue with them in the future. It seems they're tackling everything the community has been asking for and it's been a long time coming. But that doesn't mean it's all over. Most of the things listed here will be fairly short as they are things I believe BMG could fix rather quickly. At the rate they've been going this year, all of these will probably be knocked out of the park soon. Let's get started with the first one. The introduction of placement matches last year was big, but I can't be the only one that thinks they've changed nothing, right? On a fresh account, you can win all of your placement matches and be put in gold. But winning 10 for 10 should place you at least at high platinum, if not low diamond. You're put up against players of this rank, so it should make sense that if you win against them, you're roughly on their level. That's just me though. Training mode for 2v2s is a request that has been in the air for years. Currently, to practice 2v2 combos with your partner, one player will have to add a second device and control it as they go, and you're stuck with a 15 minute timer to boot. I personally never found it useful when practicing, but I'm sure it isn't a problem for most players. This would be a quality of life update I think most people would gladly accept. I mentioned it previously, but a friendly 1v1 queue needs to be added in the game. As much of a risk it is to the other queues, I feel it is necessary and rather strange that it isn't included. Account linking or something similar is coming in the near future, and that's good news. When that is, we don't know. BMG has promised in the spring, and the summer season is just around the corner. If we don't see it within the next two patches, there's a chance it may be delayed. More rewards past legend level 25 need to be added. Whether it's more colors or even mammoth coins, I don't care. Something more useful than gold coins would be great. I'm not sure when the black color for level 25 was introduced, but it has been way too long and there is no incentive to go past level 25 for any individual legend. More colors would be awesome, but maybe rewarding the player with an animated skin when they reach character level 100 would be even cooler. I know that clans for console are weird because why implement a useless feature when you can do more with it and then bring it there. But BMG has been using that excuse for years and we haven't heard anything about it. Implementing a clan war system using crew battles along with the other less competitive game modes where if the clan wins they're awarded with a special currency only the owner can use to purchase clan items like titles or colors. Clan members can only use them when in that specific clan and lose them when they leave. Probably implementing a color and banner system that represents the clan so that they can use the color scheme for their clan in the game. Can we get more chests with cool skins? I feel like we haven't had a new shop chest in years. Maybe the people at BMG are building up a roster for a new chest, but as things are right now, we haven't had a new shop chest since before 2019. And that's just because that's the last time I remember. It was probably like before 2017, honestly, but I digress. Give the new legends some love with some awesome skins and lock them behind the exclusive chest. I know I'd go for a new Fenrir Mordex type skin, maybe on like a <coughs> Arcadia. <coughs> <laughs> Fenrir Mordex Arcadia? Fenrir Arcadia? What? I'm sure there are a lot of community artists that would love to design a new skin for the game. But that's pretty much all I have to say. I made pages deep in this video and it'll be a pain to edit, but I'm getting what I want out and saying it all in the most formal way I can. I want to say, I love Brawlhalla. It's one of the few games I play daily and the only game where I keep up with the community. What BMG has managed to put together is more than amazing and I want to see it grow. Maybe in the future, those animations could turn into a full blown animated series. That would be sick, but for now we deal with the game and pray that BMG does everything in their power to improve what they have going. That's it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and share it with people to spread the word. 
whether you agree or disagree with anything I said mentioned in the comments. I read every comment and, I, and I'll try to reply if I can. Don't subscribe though because I will not make another video of this topic again. Frankly, I make whatever I feel like making and, uh, and will not cater to a demographic. But that's pretty much it. See ya.